Hello everyone and welcome back to the Perfect French with Dylan. Today we are doing the recap of the grammar course. If you are new here, all the videos included in the grammar course are free to watch here on my YouTube channel and all the exercises and the notes are in the book. So 46 lessons, today we are going to review them all. This is just a review, so we are not going to go over all the rules and all the exceptions. I'm going to review the main points for each lesson, but I'm not doing the exceptions. Otherwise, we'll be here for around three days. Two more quick notes before we start. Here, on this corner, you will always have the number of the lesson, if you want to go back and watch it. At the bottom of all the writings and explanations, you will have the page number in the book. Actually, a third point. This video has timings, so you can go from one lesson, from one review, to the other. I will try to keep this video as short as possible. Actually, fourth point. If you are watching this video, make sure to understand that this is not a course. This video is only a review. If you want to learn everything about a specific subject, go back to each lesson. This is just a review when you need to. That's it. So let's start. The first lesson that we saw was la phrase simple, the simple sentence, which is made out of subject, conjugated verb, article, and noun. For example, je mange une pomme. Je mange une pomme. So this is the simple sentence that we started with. We added slowly more elements and we also changed the article subject, etc, etc. Talking about changing subjects, les articles indéfinis. Les articles indéfinis. We have three different ones. We have un for masculine singular, une for feminine singular, and des for plural. Je mange un abricot, je mange une pomme, and je mange des cerises. Un, une, des. So it will be un ou une, Depending on the gender noun, which brings us to le genre des noms, the gender of nouns. This is a whole topic by itself. Unfortunately, I don't have time to review everything about it. But remember the rule that 90% of nouns ending with E are going to be feminine nouns. For example, une ville, une ville, a city, feminine noun. Always study the gender of nouns at the same time as you study vocabulary. This is very important, otherwise you just study ville and you have no idea if it's a feminine noun or masculine noun. Study right away a une with the noun. After the gender of noun, we have le pluriel des noms. Le pluriel des noms, plural of nouns. And here we have four different categories. When a noun ends with E, ou, o, u, I, A, I, L, R, T, L, on, en, un, un, simply add an S. Une ville, des villes. Une ville, des villes. When the noun ends with E, A, U, O, A, U, O as well, and E, U, E, simply add a nix after. Un oiseau, des oiseaux. Un oiseau, des oiseaux. Exception will take an S. Now we have a very specific one. When a noun ends with AL, it's going to change to AUX, pronounce O. Un cheval, des chevaux. Un cheval, des chevaux. Exceptions will also take an S. And finally, the last point for this one nouns ending with S, X, or Z are going to take nothing. Because we can't have S, S, or Z, S, or X, S. So we have un bras, des bras. Un bras, des bras. Okay? So we saw the nouns, we saw articles. Now let's see the subject. Les pronoms sujets. We have different ones for singular and for plural. We have je, or j apostrophe. Tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, elle. Now we can see les articles définis. 
définie. We have four different one technically three. We have le for masculine singular, la for feminine singular, and le for plural. We can also have l apostrophe when the singular noun starts with a voyelle or a silent h. Let's see. Je regarde le match. Je regarde le match. Je regarde la télévision. Je regarde la télévision. Je regarde les Jeux Olympiques. Je regarde les Jeux Olympiques. Other articles are called les articles partitifs. Les articles partitifs. We also have three, technically four. We have du, masculine singular, de la, féminine singular, de l apostrophe, singular noun, starting with a vowel or silent h, and de for plural. Je veux du fromage, je veux de la confiture, je veux de l'eau, je veux des croissants. Je veux des croissants. The next point is to see the differences between c'est, ce sont, and il est. C'est and ce sont are going to be used for person, things, nationalities, and job. Let's see. C'est une femme. C'est une femme. This is a woman. C'est un homme. C'est un homme. This is a man. Also for opinions, we have c'est beau. C'est beau. Or c'est bien. C'est bien. Il est is going to be used for descriptions, time, nationalities and jobs as well. For descriptions, il est beau, il est beau, il est deux heures, il est deux heures, or il est suisse. Il est suisse. For jobs, we have il est professeur. Il est professeur. He is a teacher. But we don't have an article between il est and the job. The next point, les adjectifs démonstratifs. We have ce, cette, cette, and ce. Ce is for masculine singular, cette for feminine singular, cette c-e-t masculine singular, starting with a voyelle or a silent h, and ce is going to be for plural. The singular ones mean This and that, and the plural one means these, those. Ce bonbon, ce bonbon, cette couverture, cette couverture, cet homme, cet homme, c'est bonbon. C'est bonbon. Numéro 10, already. Les adjectifs possessifs. We have three different columns for this one. We have Masculine singular, feminine singular, and plural. We do have a little tweak for some of them, we'll see. So we have mon, ton, son, notre, votre, leur. Ma, ta, sa, notre, votre, leur. Mais, tes, c'est, nos, vos, leur. Just be careful that mon, ton, son can also be used with a feminine noun when this one starts with a voyelle or silent h. Let's review a few numbers. From 0 to 19, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. From 10 to 100, 10, 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Let's see a few between 21 and 109. 21, 32, 43, 54, 65, 76, 87, 98, and 109. Negation in French is made out of two words or sometimes more. 
We have ne pas, ne plus, ne jamais, ne que, ne rien, ne pas encore, ne personne, n, ne, ni, ni. Usually the two parts of the negation are going to go around the verb. Ne au n apostrophe plus verb plus pas. Je ne mange pas. Je ne mange pas. In the case of a compound tense, such as passé composé, we are going to have ne au n apostrophe, avoir ou être, which are auxiliaries, plus pas, plus the past participle. I use the example pas, but it can be any type of negation. Je n'ai pas vu le chien. Je n'ai pas vu le chien. Be careful that when we have a negation, any article that are un, une ou des are going to become deux. Je mange un croissant. Je ne mange pas de croissant. Number 13. Il y a. Il y a in French can mean there is or there are. We don't change the verb depending if it's plural or singular. But it can also mean ago. Il y a une voiture devant la maison. Il y a une voiture devant la maison. Je suis arrivé il y a une heure. Je suis arrivé il y a une heure. An hour ago. La préposition a. The preposition a can have many different forms. It can be au, au a u x, à la, or a l apostrophe. J'habite au Canada. J'habite au Canada. Nous sommes à la piscine. Nous sommes à la piscine. C'est une fois la préposition de. Préposition de can also have many different forms. We have du, des, de la, au de, et l'apostrophe. Il arrive du Luxembourg. Il arrive du Luxembourg. Je viens de la Belgique. Je viens de la Belgique. The preposition en is going to stay en. It never changes. Never. Ils vont en France. Ils vont en France. En 1987. En 1987. I was born in 1987. Or, elle vient en voiture. Elle vient en voiture. The verb aller can be followed by many, many different prepositions. So let's see. When followed by a feminine noun is going to be à la. Aller à la pharmacie. When followed by a masculine noun is going to be au. Aller au cinéma. Plural noun. Aller aux courses. A -U -X. Aller aux courses. Followed by a feminine country. Aller en Suisse. En Suisse. When followed by a masculine country. Aller au Mexique, plural country. Aller aux Philippines, aux Philippines. By a city, aller à Amsterdam, à Amsterdam. When followed by a person, a business or a store, you're going to use chez. Aller chez le dentiste, aller chez le dentiste. Talking about prepositions, les prépositions de lieu, prepositions of place. The list that we are going to see. This one, usually, they are followed by an article. We have contre, dans, derrière, devant, entre, sous, and sur. La lampe est entre le mur et le canapé. Followed by an article. La lampe est entre le mur et le canapé. Some prepositions of place are also going to be followed by the. À gauche de. The is going to change depending on the following noun. Je suis à gauche de la sortie. Je suis à gauche de la sortie. De la sortie. After the preposition of place, we have the preposition of time. À, en, dans, après, avant, depuis. But we also have other prepositions that we use a lot as well. Such as par, pour, à propos de, avec, d'après, environ. Il va pleuvoir d'après la météo. Il va pleuvoir d'après la météo. Now let's see when not to use an article. 
When we are talking about profession, we are not going to add an article, except after C. If we say, il est docteur, il est docteur, we cannot say, il est un docteur, doesn't work, but we can say, c'est un docteur, c'est un docteur, but il est docteur. After the end references of quantity, we don't add an article either. Il a beaucoup de problèmes. Il a beaucoup de problèmes. After some prepositions when talking in a general way. Elle cherche un appartement avec balcon. Elle cherche un appartement avec balcon. Also after parler when talking about languages. Je parle français depuis plusieurs années. Je parle français depuis plusieurs années. One day you'll be able to say that as well. Be careful that the preposition can also change the meaning of the verb. For example, arriver à versus arriver de. Il n'arrive pas à étudier tout seul. Il n'arrive pas à étudier tout seul. Ce colis arrive de Chine. Ce colis arrive de Chine. You have more in the lesson, of course, I don't have time to review all of them. Les questions, oui, non. Yes, no question. We have three different ways to ask those questions. The first one being simply raising your voice at the end. Tu es prête? Tu es prête? For the second one, simply add est-ce que in front of the subject. Est-ce que tu es prête? Est-ce que tu es prête? And finally, the third one is to use the inversion. Es-tu prête? Es-tu prête? To ask a question, you can also use one of our adverb interrogative. We have quand, comment, pourquoi, ou, combien, or combien de. So if we see, when are you leaving? We are going to have, quand est-ce que tu pars? Quand est-ce que tu pars? Or, quand pars-tu? Quand pars-tu? For the informal way, we are going to add quand at the end. Tu pars quand? Tu pars quand? Now, les pronoms interrogatifs. We have qui, which can also be qui est-ce qui ou qui est-ce que. Then we have que, which can also be qu'est-ce qui, qu'est-ce que. And then we have de, à, avec, etc. Quoi. First, qui. Qui is going to be used as the subject of the question. And we cannot use the inversion with it. If we look at the sentence, who saw this movie? And the question, I mean. Qui a vu ce film? Qui a vu ce film? Qui est-ce qui a vu ce film? Qui est-ce qui a vu ce film? So, est-ce que is allowed but not the inversion? Qui can also be the subject of the question. In this case, the inversion is going to be allowed. Qui as-tu vu? Qui as-tu vu? So, tu as vu qui? Qui is the object? Qui est-ce que tu as vu? Qui est-ce que tu as vu? Que is also the object. In this case, we are obviously not talking about a person. The inversion is allowed as well. What do you want? Que veux-tu? Que veux-tu? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? When we turn the discussion into an informal, we are going to have Tu veux quoi? Tu veux quoi? Because que can never be at the end of the question. But quoi is okay. Tu veux quoi? If you are going to use it with a preposition, preposition being with the verb, we are also going to use quoi. For example, if we look at à quoi penses-tu, à quoi penses-tu, or à quoi est-ce que tu penses, à quoi est-ce que tu penses, because penser à, penser à. So we're going to use à quoi, not à que. Another way that we have to ask a question is with quel. Quel, 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 and quel. If we see what dish did you order, the inversion and the use of est-ce que are allowed? Quel plat as-tu commandé? Quel plat as-tu commandé? Quel plat est-ce que tu as commandé? Quel plat est-ce que tu as commandé? For good to say that, but this is when quel is followed by a noun. In a more casual way, tu as commandé quel plat? Quel plat? Quel can never be at the end of the question. If we see one with the verb after quel, we have Quel est ton film préféré? Quel est ton film préféré? What is your favorite movie? So, est-ce que all the use of the inversion are not allowed? Les adjectifs. Les adjectifs is very long to teach. 
and the review will be as long. So let's see 10 common adjectives. The first one is going to be the masculine one. The second one is going to be the feminine one. We have courageux, courageuse, désolé, désolé, difficile, difficile, entier, entière, fort, forte, grave, grave, lent, lente, ouvert, ouverte, petit, petite, suivant, suivante. So all these adjectives can have four different forms, masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, feminine plural. But we have three that have a fifth form. The first one, nouveau, nouvelle, nouveau, nouvelle, nouvelle as well with one L. When the following noun starts with royal or silent H. We also have vieux, vieille, vieux, vieille. And the fifth one is vieille. And then beau, belle, beau, belle. The fifth one is belle. Now, where to place the adjectives? Où placer les adjectifs? Most of them in French are going to be placed after the noun. But some very specific ones are going to be placed before the noun. A good way to remember them is with bangs. Beauty, age, number, goodness and size. Let's see a few. We have jeune, nouveau, premier, deuxième, bon, mauvais, petit et grand. Un petit livre, un grand building. Un petit livre, un grand building. Next one, comparatif, superlatif. For the comparatif, we have aussi que, plus que, moins que, autant que. Elle est aussi grande que sa sœur. Elle est aussi grande que sa sœur. We have a noun. Autant de que, plus de que, moins de que. On a autant d'argent que mon frère. On a autant d'argent que mon frère. For the superlatif, we have le, la, les, plus, or le, la, les, moins. Elle est la plus âgée. Elle est la plus âgée. She's the oldest. I just told you that the bangs adjectives are placed before the noun. We have other ones that are also going to be placed before the noun. They are called les adjectifs indéfinis. They are autre, certain, chaque, divers, plusieurs, quelques, tel, and two. Most of them agree in gender and numbers as well. Chaque jeu a ses propres règles. Chaque jeu a ses propres règles. L'objet direct. In sentences, we are going to have subject, verb, plus direct object. If we see, je lis un livre. Je lis quoi? Un livre. Un livre is the direct object. Il l'appelle Ashley. Il l'appelle qui? Ashley. Ashley is the direct object. So we find the direct object by asking the questions quoi? Qui. We can turn the direct object into a pronoun. And they are me au m apostrophe, te au t apostrophe, le l apostrophe, la l apostrophe, nous, vous, and les. So if we take back the example, je lis un livre, je le lis. Okay? Now we also have l'objet indirect, indirect object. Same, we are going to have subject, verb, indirect object. And now we are going to ask the question, à qui? À qui? Not only qui. Je donne un conseil à Jean. Je donne un conseil à qui? À Jean. Objet indirect. Just like the direct object, they also have pronoun to replace them. We have me, m apostrophe, te, t apostrophe, lui, nous, vous, and leur. So if you want to say, she's talking to me, in French, it's elle me parle. Me. Me is the indirect object pronoun. We do have other pronouns and they are Y and en. Y is going to replace the following preposition for places. We have a, en, dans, and she. We are going to have subject, Y, verb. Je vais en France ce weekend. En France is going to be replaced by Y. J'y vais ce weekend. 
Y will also replace the preposition a when talking about things. Pensez à. Je pense à mes vacances. À mes vacances. J'y pense. J'y pense. En is going to replace any object starting with the preposition de, a reference of quantity or the partitive article du, de la, de, etc. Est-ce que tu as du lait? Est-ce que tu as du lait? Est-ce que tu en as? Est-ce que tu en as? So that's a lot of pronouns. How to use them together? We have five different colons in this one. In the first one, we are going to have me, m apostrophe, te, t apostrophe, nous and vous. Everything about people. Then we have le, l apostrophe, la, l apostrophe, or les, lui, leur, y and on. You can remember it with my little memo technique, the selfish word. Me first, object second, other people third, and then this, the, the donkey, e on. Works really well with young students. So if you look, elle me lit une histoire, une histoire is going to be replaced by elle me la lit. Elle me la lit. Ok? 35, we're almost done. Now, les pronoms toniques. We have moi, toi, lui, elle, nous, vous, eux, elle, and then we have soi. Est-ce qu'il est avec toi? Est-ce qu'il est avec toi? Non, avec tu? Or, c'est pour elle. C'est pour elle. Les pronoms possessifs. We have four different colons here. We have masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, feminine plural. We have le mien, le tien, le sien, le nôtre, le vôtre, le leur. Féminine, la mienne, la tienne, la sienne, la nôtre, la vôtre, la leur. Plural. Les miens, les tiens, les siens, les nôtres, les vôtres, les leurs. Féminine plural, les miennes, les tiennes, les siennes, les nôtres, les vôtres, les leurs. J'ai pris mon téléphone. Tu as pris le tien? So technically this is one word, ok? Le tien. The next type of pronoun is les pronoms démonstratifs. We have celui, celle. Ce, celle. If you want to say this one, you can add si. Celui-ci, celle-ci, ceci, celle-ci. If you want to say that one, you can add la. Celui-là, celle-là, cela, celle-là. Lequel est-ce que tu veux? Celui-ci. Celui-ci. Les pronoms indéfinis démonstratifs. Now, we have ce, ceci, cela. Ou ça, ça being the contraction of ceci ou cela. Cela devrait être possible. Cela devrait être possible. Do you remember that we saw les adjectifs indéfinis? Now we are going to see les pronoms indéfinis. Which replace les adjectifs indéfinis, followed by the noun, and it turns it into a pronoun. So we have un autre, d'autres, certains, chacun. Plusieurs, quelque chose, quelqu'un, quelques-uns, and there's more, but the list is long. Beaucoup d'employés arrivent à l'heure, d'autres arrivent en retard. D'autres arrivent en retard. So we could have said d'autres employés arrivent en retard, but here we are taking d'autres and employés, and we are replacing it with a pronoun. D'autres arrivent en retard. Oops, thank you. Your favorite pronouns, les pronoms relatifs. They are qui, que, dont, ou, and lequel. Qui is going to replace the subject which can be a person or thing. Usually followed by a verb. J'ai vu un film qui était romantique. Que, on the other hand, replaces the direct object. Because of that, it cannot be followed by the verb directly. It's going to be followed by the Pronoun, the subject pronoun. Confirm my words. Le film que j'ai vu, que j'ai vu, était nul. Don't is going to replace an object or person when it includes de. Le jardin dont je m'occupe est en mauvais état. Don't. Because s'occuper de. 
ou refers to a place, a place in time or an actual place. Le jour où tu es né était merveilleux. Le jour où tu es né était merveilleux. Lequel is a whole subject by itself, but lequel can change to auquel and also duquel. Lequel will be used with other prepositions, such as sur, avec, dans, pour, etc. C'est la robe avec laquelle je me suis mariée. C'est la robe avec laquelle je me suis mariée. 41. The use of ce qui, ce que, ce dont. So we have ce qui, ce que, ce dont. But we can also have ce à quoi, ce avec quoi, ce en quoi, ce pourquoi and ce sur quoi. We are going to use the second column when the verb is followed by a specific preposition. Pre preposition. When the verb is followed by a specific preposition. Let's see it. Right. Tu comprends ce que je t'explique? Tu comprends ce que je t'explique? So we are going to use ce que to replace the use of the relative pronoun que plus what was following, basically. It's just to avoid repetition, okay? Tu comprends ce que je t'explique. Je sais ce dont tu as peur. Je sais ce dont tu as peur. Because avoir peur de. Je veux savoir ce à quoi tu t'intéresses. Je veux savoir ce à quoi tu t'intéresses. S'intéresser à. Now, les adverbes. French adverbs can have many, many different forms. A lot of them are going to end in man, M-E-N-T. And we can actually build them from the adjective. When the adjective ends with E, such as bizarre, we simply add man, bizarrement. That's the adverb. When the adjective ends with a consonant, we are going to take the feminine of the adjective. So we have certain, certaine, we take certain and we add man. Certainement, the ones ending in A-N-T, E-N-T, are going to change for amant or amant. Constant, constamment. And then we have all the other ones such as toujours, demain, etc, etc. All the regular adverbs. You have a very, very long list in the book, so I don't need to review that too much. But where to place the adverb? The adverb is usually placed right after the verb. Subject, verb, adverb. Il est toujours en retard. Toujours. Les enfants jouent calmement. Calmement. When you have a tense such as passé composé, we are going to have subject, avoir, être, adverb, and then past participle. We have a list of very specific ones that are going to be before. Let's see a few. Assez, bien, beaucoup, bientôt, déjà, encore, enfin, jamais. Nous avons beaucoup aimé ce film. Nous avons beaucoup aimé ce film. The use of bon versus bien. We are going to focus on c'est bien, c'est bon. We use c'est bon for physical sensation or taste. C'est vraiment bon when you taste something. C'est vraiment bon. It's really good. It tastes really good. C'est bien is going to be for judgment opinion. Tu as réussi, c'est bien. Tu as réussi, c'est bien. When you comment under one of my videos of one of my Instagram posts, you can say c'est bien. Don't say c'est bon because you can't taste the lesson. C'est bien. The use of encore and toujours. Encore usually means again and toujours usually means always. But they can both mean still and yet. Let's see. Elle est encore étudiante. Elle est toujours étudiante. Still and still. That's for an affirmative sentence and then a negative sentence. Il n'a pas encore fini. Il n'a toujours pas fini. Isn't done yet. Okay. Finally, the last point is les conjonctions. I'm only going to review the coordinating conjunction because we have a lot, a lot in the book. And those ones are, yeah, some of the most used ones. So we have mais, ou, et, donc, or, ni, car. C'est difficile, mais tu peux y arriver. C'est difficile, mais tu peux y arriver. That's it, the grammar course is officially done. A little bit sad, I have to say. I will be back in a week, actually a week and a few days. So next Wednesday, I believe the 27th, I will have a test on this channel, 20 questions, just to see if you study well. 
I'm going back to my regular schedule for uploads, which is going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I will be announcing the next course in the next few weeks. This course was incredible to teach, but it was a lot of work. So I am taking a week off, starting now. But if you want to keep learning, you can join me on my Instagram. I will post something every day. So I guess now I have to change my ending. I can't say I will see you tomorrow. But I will see you next week for the test. A bientôt.